Let's pray over the message. Father, we are excited today to be able to look into the Word of God today. Um, Lord, it's an honor to be able to, to hear the Word. It's an honor to be able to share the Word. Lord, today I pray that you would open up our hearts and our spirits to receive what you have for us today, God. That, Lord, we would be challenged. Uh, I pray we would be encouraged. I pray that we would grow and we would mature, Father, in our walk with you today as we as we look at the Word of God this last day of the year, God, and we just pray that, Lord, when we leave this place, that we will be nearer and closer to you. Uh, that, Lord, because we don't ever want to walk out of a service the same way we came in. We want to we walk out more inspired, more in love, more committed to you. We pray that we would decrease and Christ would increase in our hearts and our lives. And, Lord, we pray for your blessings in Jesus' wonderful name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Now, let me ask you a question. Did you get what you wanted for Christmas? <laughs> or did you get what you were hoping for at Christmas? You know, it's funny. Some people have a story. How many of you have a story of something you really wanted maybe when you were a child and, and you never got it? Anybody? Ready to feel that way? Right. Okay. You know, it's funny. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about that this week because a lot of people have those kind of stories. But, you know, we, we, def we didn't have much growing up, you know, but we had what we needed. But I don't ever remember that. I don't ever remember, like, really wanting something and then not getting it. And it, like, scarred me for life. You know what I mean? So, and so some people are that way. I guess I just didn't want much. I don't know. I, I don't remember that. And so, now, I mean, for some of you, it, it may be a little frustrating that you didn't get what you wanted, you know, uh, you know that maybe you didn't get what you, what you really desired. And, and, you know, it can be frustrating maybe when we don't get what we want at Christmas. But, you know, most of the time, the stuff we want at Christmas is just that stuff, right? I mean, it's just stuff. You know, if you're a kid, it's toys or Maybe, you know, it's clothes, or maybe it's a gaming system, or maybe it's a trip that you wanted to go on, but it's usually just stuff, and it may be frustrating, but we can move on, right? But how many of you know that when life doesn't give you what you want, or life doesn't give you what you expect, it can be kind of challenging, right? That's a little different. That's a little more hard to deal with when life doesn't give you what you want because it can be painful. Let's be, let's be obvious. How many of you went through some pain because you didn't get what you wanted, right? We, we've been there. And for some of you, 2023 was a good year. It was better than maybe you hoped. But for others, 2023 didn't give you what you wanted. I mean, 2023 was going to be the year that you were going to lose 10 pounds, right? It was the year that you were going to reconnect with some family members. Uh, you know, it was the year that, that you were going to stop drinking or stop smoking or stop spending money on credit cards. Oh, somebody say amen. All right. Things were going to be turned around in 2023. You were going to go to church more. Uh, you were going to get a better job. You were going to make some new friends. Uh, you know, all kinds of different things. You wanted it, but it didn't happen, right? And so let me ask you a question. Will this year be better? Will it be the year that, that you want it to be? What can you do to get what you want in 2024? At the start of the new year, this is what I love about a new year. It's, it's almost like a fresh start every year. It's like we get to start over. At the start of a new year, you get to decide how you're going to approach 2024. How are you going to approach it? If you wanted something for a long time and last year it didn't go as planned, I want to share with you part of one of the most famous stories in the Bible, the birth of Jesus. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, Pastor John, Christmas is over. You already talked to us about Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. You know, it's, it's time to move on. Well, at the end of the nativity story, we meet two people that we don't really talk about very often at Christmas time. They weren't at the manger. They showed up after all the big Christmas events were over which makes it the perfect weekend after Christmas to tell their story. So if 2023 didn't give you what you wanted and, and, and you want something better in 2024, I believe there's something you can learn from this message. 
So after uh, the birth of Jesus, about a month later, Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple. It was time to have him dedicated to the Lord. And, and there they met two old people, Anna and Simeon. And we read about them in Luke chapter 2, verse 25. And so let's begin to read. It said, Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So Simeon was probably a priest. The Bible calls him righteous and devout. Simeon was waiting for God's promise to come true. And he had been waiting a long time. Now, we don't like the fact that Simeon had to wait. And you're like, well, what do you mean, Pastor John? Well, let's just be honest. We don't like the words God, prayer, and wait in the same sentence. Right? We, we don't like that. Okay, we like God in prayer, but we don't like the wait part, right? If we're honest, most of us think it's a little unfair that we got to wait, right? Come on, let's just be honest. If God promises you something and, and you're living right, and you may, then you should get the promise right away. You should get it now. And when you're doing the right things but don't get what you want, sometimes it's a little frustrating, Right? Sometimes it's a little confusing. You're like, why am I not getting this right away? Maybe you saved yourself from marriage, but you're still single. Maybe you didn't lie or cheat at work, but you still hadn't got the promotion. You didn't cheat on the test, but the scholarships, man, they're just not coming your way. You changed your diet, but it's still bad report. You forgave your family, but they keep treating you like trash. I mean, it's confusing. If God said he will give you something and you are good, then we should get it, right? We think we should get it right away. Does God really reward good living? Well, yes. But it doesn't really work that way. God's promises and answers are his to give when and how he wants. I think a lot of amens out of that one. But here's what I've really learned. It's not really so much about when God wants, it's when what is best for us. It's the timing and what is best for us. Amen? Of course God rewards you for living right. Blessing follows obedience. We know that. But blessing doesn't always, listen to me, blessing doesn't always match your experience or your timeline. Boy, y'all loving that, aren't you? <laughs> God delivers, listen to me, at the right time. And not only at the right time, but sometimes not what you want, but what you really need. Come on, right? What you really need is more important than what you really want sometimes. When you're waiting, you want to give up. Come on, sometimes you want to give up. You want to quit or you want to take a shortcut and try to make it happen faster. Can I tell you, don't do that. Like, like righteous, devout Simeon, do right things. Keep doing the right thing. Keep moving in the right direction. It's possible the reason you didn't get what you wanted had nothing to do with you at all. You did all the right things. Can I tell you, keep doing the right things. Right? It's tempting to stop doing right. Now, I don't understand why. I mean, it doesn't make anything better, but let's be honest. Sometimes it's tempting to stop doing right because we get a little frustrated. But can I tell you, living righteously and obeying God is not about getting what you want. I said living righteously and obeying God is not about getting what you want. You obey God because He deserves it. He, listen, he commands it, and he is God, and you're not. Come on. The right thing is the right thing, regardless of what happens. Don't forget, the ultimate reward will come, though. Amen? Now is not the time to stop doing right. 
Now is not the time to, to change course, but just keep doing what is right. Amen? If you need to change, we probably need to start doing some things right. Some things we're not doing that we should be doing. Right? And so now's the time to start those things. Let me suggest a few things to you that you really need to do. Number one, read your Bible. Listen, read your Bible. It's amazing to me how many people call themselves followers of Christ and think they can actually have a, a close relationship with Jesus without reading the Word of God. I mean, it's like thinking you can have a good, healthy, loving relationship and never listen to your spouse. It's like thinking you can, have a, you can be a good employee and never showing up to work. It's like thinking you can do good in the classroom and never going to class. Listen, he is the bread of life. He is our strength. He is our encouragement. He is our life. The Word of God is the bread of life. Amen? Listen, we have a great way to help you start reading this year. We're going to do a Bible reading program. Uh, it's through a Bible app called YouVersion. And so I encourage you, if you haven't downloaded it, make sure you download the YouVersion app. And then make sure you create an account. And then you send Valonia First Assembly a friend request, okay? And then this evening, Pastor Brandon is going to send out through that app the plan, the reading plan. It's a year-long reading plan. He'll send out January's plan at the end of the day, okay? So you'll be able to start fresh in the morning. If you don't want to use the app, we have it printed out there, the, what we're going to be reading. And you can pick that up and take that with you on the way home as well. We have to begin to read the Word of God. It is the bread of life, Amen. Number two, pray. Man, at least pray for 10 minutes a day where you do nothing but just get with God and spend time with Him. And listen to Him. Don't just pray for what you want, but pray that God will change you. Come on. Pray that God will make you what you want Him to be, what He wants you to be. So many times we pray, but all we pray about is what we want. And we need to be praying about what God wants. We need to be praying for souls to be saved. We need to be praying for our country. We need to be praying for our family. We need to be praying that God would make us the men and women of God he wants us to be. Amen? Listen, all those things I just said about, about, uh, about Bible reading apply to prayer too. You have to pray. Number three, join a ministry team. Listen, join a ministry team in the church. Doing things for others is a great way to have a better year. Listen, there's a lot of places to serve. I know that Forever Free still needs a lot of help, and they would love for you to come and work with them. Serving kids and loving on kids in preschool is a great way to serve. Or uh, Teaching a Connect class with one of our, our kids' classes is a great way to serve. Our, our Wednesday night uh, crew could always use more help. And, or maybe when I mention an outreach program that we're going to be being a part of, step up and help with that. But get involved in a ministry. It's a great way to draw closer to the Lord. Amen. And if you're new to the church or you're new to the Lord and you want to draw closer to God, stop by the Connection Center. We got some books out there we want to give you that will really help you grow in the Lord. And number five, most of all, this is important, decide to live a holy, pure life. I said decide to live a holy, pure life. Amen? Amen. Listen, you can't do that, though, if you don't do number one and two. But decide. It's a choice. I'm going to live for Jesus. I'm going to live a holy life. Simeon was devout. He was committed to God. Can I tell you the lack of holiness in the whole church in America is really saddening me. There's so much stuff we just keep accepting and, and we keep doing. And there's so many habits and so many things that we allow into our life and entertainment choices that we justify. We need to get back to living a holy life committed unto God. Amen? Listen, you need to make good, right decisions. Follow Jesus well. Amen? Could it be the reason life hasn't given you what you want is because your commitment to Jesus isn't what it should be? Could, could it be? Listen, the best decision you can make in 2024 is to make a complete decision to give God your whole life. 
I'm not holding anything back anymore. I'm not playing any more games. I'm not kind of serving God and kind of doing my thing. It's all God. Amen? I trust Him. I'm committed to Him. This, this, and this could be the most important decision of your life. Put your complete faith and trust in Jesus. Listen, do it His way. Amen? Do it His way. 2 Corinthians 6, 17 says, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye what? Separate. Be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean things. And I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Chapter 7, verse 1 says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all. Everybody say all. All, all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Perfecting. Come on now. Perfecting holiness. Right? In the fear of I want you to bow your head just for a moment before we go on. We're going to say a little prayer. If you're here this morning and you hear me talking and you already sense the Holy Spirit speaking to you and tugging at your heart and I don't have to go any further. You know you're not right with God but you want to be right with God and you want to make sure you leave this place in right relationship with Jesus. If that is you, I just want you to lift your hand up real fast and put it back down. Say, pray for me. Amen. 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 I see those hands. The Bible is very clear that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and then cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, that's, that's a start to a journey of serving God and living for God. Can I have everyone pray after me, please? Say, dear Lord, I love you. I want to give my life to you completely. Help me not to hold anything back, but surrender all of my life to you. And from this day forward, help me grow in my relationship with you to be the man or the woman that you've called me to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You see, Simeon trusted God for his promise to come true. Simeon wasn't promised a new car. He wasn't promised a, a bigger job or a better job or a big raise or a big house. Instead, God promised that he would see the consolation of Israel. And we don't use that word much. Matter of fact, we don't like that word because that's usually uh, associated with losers. You know, if you lose, you get a consolation prize. But that's not what that means at all. Consolation means comfort and rescue. Simeon was waiting for the comfort and the rescue of Israel. He wanted it. Listen to me. God promised it, but he hadn't gotten it yet. He didn't get what he wanted. But then one day, come on somebody. I said, then one day, it all changed. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms. He praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people. A lot for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. So Simeon, listen to me, he had to be surprised that the fact that a little baby was going to be the Savior of Israel. Earlier I said God's answers were on his time schedule, but God's answers are often surprising. Right? They really are. Oftentimes his, his answers are surprising. They aren't what we expected. Simeon was probably looking for something other than a baby. How many of you think he probably was, right? But when God showed up, Simeon took him in his arms gratefully and he worshiped the Lord. 
And he said, you are faithful to your promise. I see our comfort. I see our rescue. Thank you, Jesus. But Simeon went further. He said, Jesus would be the Savior and the glory of Israel. But, and this is a big shift, Jesus would also be the light of the Gentiles. Now that's important. You see this multiple times in God's Word. Jesus is for everyone. Every soul matters to God. Jesus would comfort Israel and, and be the light to the Gentiles. Everyone would be saved by this baby, Jesus. And Mary and Joseph were amazed at what they were saying, what he was saying. But Simeon wasn't finished. Then Simeon blessed them. And said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against. So that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Now I don't know about you, but the Bible said he blessed them. And then when I read that, that don't really sound like a blessing. Right? That don't sound like a blessing. We expect him to say, Oh, Lord, give them everything they want. Come on. Right? Just, just give them a golden road to walk on. Give them a bigger house, a, a better car, more money. Just bless them and protect them. But that's not what Simeon said. His blessing, listen to me, this is important. His blessing prepared Mary for what was going to happen later. I said his blessing prepared Mary for what was going to happen later. Amen? Listen, there are times God is trying to prepare you for what is going to happen later, amen? Because he knows sometimes there's some stuff you got to go through to get to the promise. There's some stuff you got to go to to get to the blessing. And so many times when God is trying to prepare us for what we have to go through so that we can end up with the promise, we don't want to hear it, so we're not ready. Come on. And we're not ready to go through what he prepared us for. Therefore, we don't end up where we need to be. We need to listen. And we need to receive what God is trying to prepare us for. Can you imagine a guy walking up to a brand new mother and saying what was, what was about to happen to them? I mean, now we know that Simeon was talking about Jesus' death on the cross. But at that time, it had to be confusing. And it had to be disturbing. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes the God, the things God prepares us to, that we're going to go through is a little confusing. And can I be honest with you? It's a little disturbing. Right? But listen to me. If God is preparing you for it, just receive it and walk through it with Him. Amen? Don't run from it. Walk through it with Him. Amen? Mary and Joseph could have tried to hide and run away and hide Jesus, but they're like, no, we're going to do what God tells us to do. Even in Simeon's words, we see God's compassion. He was preparing Mary and us for the true purpose of Jesus. Jesus came to die. Listen to me. His death was the plan. His death was the plan. And some of you are like, uh, this is the plan, God? This is the plan? What I'm going through is the plan? Yeah. Would God, would God help me? Would God let me go through this so somebody else could come to know Jesus? Yeah. Would God let me go through this so that I can become stronger and more of a witness? Yeah. Sometimes we don't like the plan, but do you understand the death was the plan? It's an important thing to remember. When you aren't getting what you want, God is still in control. Right? Did you hear me? There would be challenging times for Jesus' family. And nothing, though, caught God by surprise. He was with them at the start. He was with Mary at the end. He was in control. Amen? And I'm going to tell you something. There is no doubt Mary remembered that moment when Jesus was on the cross. She remembered the prayer. Come on. She remembered about the, 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 the sword that was going to spear her soul. She remembered that. And so she knew even though this was didn't what she wanted, it's what God wanted. And so she received it. Amen. In the same way, it's with you. The Lord is with you. Now I know 2023 may not have been what you hoped for it to be, but it doesn't mean it caught God by surprise. Right? 
Just because it's hard doesn't mean you are on your own. This is so important. Just because it's hard doesn't mean you're on your own. God is in control. Trust Him. He is with you. Amen. And then at that moment, somebody else walked up. Her name was Anna. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Anna's life didn't go as she planned when she first started out. Her husband died after seven years of marriage. This, then this widow served in the temple for decades. She worshipped and she prayed and faithfully gave herself to the Lord every day. Then she saw the Lord. It goes on to say, Coming up to them at the very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jesus. Anna saw Jesus. She thanked God for him. And then she told everyone about Jesus. Anna, despite difficulties, listen to me, and decades of waiting. Some of you, you can't wait 24 hours. You can't even wait a week, right? Decades of waiting, she saw the Lord. Amen? And if you ask her, did your life turn out the way you thought it was going to when you were younger? She'd say no, right? I mean, on her wedding day, she didn't think that she was only going to be married seven years, right? She probably didn't plan on living in the temple for 60 years. I don't think her childhood dream was to be a lifelong widow. But her plans didn't happen. Her dreams did not evolve the way she wanted them to. But even though she did nothing wrong, her husband still died. How did she respond? She stayed faithful. Come on. I said she stayed faithful. This year, church, stay faithful. It's going to be a challenging year. Stay faithful. Let me tell you something. My in-laws are the definition of faithful. Phil and Jill McConnell. Both of them have served God their whole life. Both of them are retired now. And if you ask anyone they worked with, they will tell you they were faithful to serve their God. They've attended the same church for 53 years. They have been through four different pastors, a building program, multiple staff members who've come and gone. The church has grown and the church has decreased and the church has grown and the church has decreased. And they have had friends die and they have friends leave the church, but they've stayed faithful. My brother-in-law, Kara's sister's husband, is a pastor. And we've both been in ministry for over 30 years. And, and, and we've both been pretty close in proximity to where they live. And a lot of people would assume, well, they would leave their church to go to where, their, where one of their daughter's husbands is pastoring. Nope. They stayed faithful to where God called them to be. Come on. They, have they always agreed with everything? I can tell you for certainty. Absolutely not. Have they always been super happy there? Absolutely not. Did they leave because they got their feelings hurt or disagreed with something? Absolutely not. Did they stay faithful to the place God had called them to be and support and serve? Absolutely. Absolutely. You see, anyone can leave when it's hard. A church, a marriage, a family, a job, a ministry... It takes a special person to stay when it's hard. Whatever you are trying to accomplish this year, be faithful. Be faithful. Be consistent. Even if it doesn't go as planned, like Anna, turn your tragedy into an opportunity. Come on. Right? Give yourself fully to the Lord. Stay faithful. How long was Anna faithful? Well, at least till she was 84. 
But then one day, come on, her faithfulness was rewarded. So are you saying, Pastor John, I have to wait 84 years to see my promise come true? No. But what I am saying is stay faithful until the answer comes. Who knows? Today could be the day. Wouldn't it be a tragedy that you quit the very day your prayer is going to be answered? I want you to bow your heads one more time. I want to pray for you a moment. God, I know there are people here in this room and those watching online. Lord, they've been faithful. Oh, we haven't been perfect, but we've tried and we're, we're trying to be faithful. But Lord, there's just something that we've been praying for. There's a loved one that needs to know Jesus. There's somebody that's sick. There's a marriage situation. And God, we're struggling and we're struggling with staying faithful. But God, I just pray you would give them the strength and you would give them the, the, give them the, the encouragement and give them the wisdom and surround them with people that will help them. Lord, help us to stay faithful to what you've called us to do. What is it you desire for us to do? What it is it you want us to be? Lord, I pray also, God, that we would, we would see some answered prayers. We would see those loved ones come home. We would see people come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We would see those marriages healed. We would, we would see those promotions we've been working so hard for, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray you'd help us to stay faithful. And I pray you would help us to see the answer to that faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So before we leave, there's one more thing I want to show you in this passage. It's back in Simeon's story. I skipped over it, but I want to go back to it. Remember what Simeon did? He, he blessed them, right? In verse 34, it says, Then Simeon blessed them. Can I tell you, this is going to be an important year for the church in America. This is going to be a very important year for the church in America. We've got a chance to be a blessing in a world of hate and cursing. There is a major culture clash taking place. The culture in God's word is clashing like never before in America. The culture in God's word is clashing. And listen, we can stand out more than ever before in a good way or a bad way. No matter what your personal goals are for 2024, can I challenge you? Make the choice to be a blessing. I want you to listen to me. Make the choice to be a blessing. Division and fighting in our nation is heating up. It's a political election year. Uh, expect political parties to go on attack more than ever. And unfortunately, it's become very common to slam other people online. Attacking others on social media happens way too often, and I don't think it's going to slow down. But sadly, even the church have taken up this fight. While Christians believe in the fruit of the Spirit, come on, and we believe it's important, some don't think it applies to their preferences or their opinions. Some don't think the fruit of the Spirit applies when it comes to your preference or your opinion. Now, don't get me wrong, Christians have a preference and an opinion, and we can express them, but we should do so in a gentle, loving way. Right? Our words should be peace-filled and used under self-control. Our lives should bless others even when we disagree. Not a lot of amens on that one. I said, even when we disagree... This is exactly what Christians are supposed to do. Be a blessing, right? Look at Colossians 4, 6. Let your speech be... Wait a minute. Did that say always? Always? What about when I really hate what I just read on social media? Come on. Always? No, he, surely he didn't mean always. I mean, come on, if I think that political person is... Is there any kids in here today? If I think that political person is stupid, I have the right to call him stupid, right? If I think they're a moron, I have the right to call him a moron, right? 
Well, let's see here. Let your speech be always with grace. Seasoned with salt that you may know how you have to answer every man. You know, I was on the way back from Fayetteville last night uh, after a little engagement dinner. Thank God Dylan got engaged. Come on, somebody. Give Jesus. I told her last night, I'm not taking him back. <laughs> He's yours forever. All right. I already took him back once. Nope. He's gone. I already moved out, moved back in. I allowed to move back in one time. So. But I, how many of you, and maybe not be very many, but how many Cowboy fans we got in the house? Two, two, three, four. We got four people saved. So. so I'm watching that game last night, and on the way home, Kara's driving, I'm not. Okay, so I'm watching that game, and, and I'm listening to it, and they're doing real good. And that last drive... With the Detroit Lions, I don't know if you watched it or not, but drove me out. I disagreed with everything the coach did. Everything. I thought, this is crazy. What is he doing? I'm yelling at the TV screen or the phone. I'm like, what is he doing? That's crazy. Da, 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 da. But you know what I didn't do? I didn't get online and start bad-mouthing the coach. After the game was over, I'm scrolling, and all I'm seeing is people talking bad about him. Can I tell you, you know what, you know what uh, Coach McCarthy is before he's a coach? He's a, he's a human being. He's somebody who needs Jesus. He's somebody who needs Jesus. What if, what if God's dealing with his heart and he's trying to come to know Jesus and then he's seeing people, because I'm going to tell you the reason I'm saying this, because half of those guys that were bad-mouthing them were preachers. Come on, guys. What's more important? You get your opinion out there about the coach? Or the politician, come on. Or your favorite team. Or, or is it more important that we represent Jesus? Is it more important that our speech be seasoned with salt and grace, right? Listen, this political season coming up, and especially if you're like a, in leadership position or you teach a class, I'm going to tell you, if I see you saying something negative on Facebook, I'm just going to put in the comments Colossians 4, 6. And that means, take it down. <laughs> take it down. And if I say something, you respond with Colossians 4, 6. And I'm going to take it down. Come on. Jesus said, bless those who persecute you. What? Bless them. Jesus said, pray that God blesses your enemies. I don't want to bless them. I want to smack them. What? I got to bless my enemies? I, I, I got to pray for that politician I disagree with instead of calling any names? Come on. Right? A lot of amens on that one. All right. Peter summarized it best when he told us in 1 Peter, Finally, all of you live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic. Love as brothers. Be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or... Did it really just say that? Insult with what? The reason we insult those people is because they insulted us by the decision they make. Come on. Right? That is so ungodly. I can't believe they made that decision. Yeah, they're sinners. They make ungodly decisions. And we don't insult them to win them to Jesus. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of what? Strongholds. Amen. How do we pull them down? Through prayer. Not insult, with insult, but with blessing. Because to this you are called so that you may inherit a what? A blessing. I love the message version of this scripture. No retaliation, no sharp tongue sarcasm. Instead, bless. That's your job, to bless. 
You'll be a blessing and also get a blessing. You are called to bless. It's your job to bless. And if you aren't blessing, you're being disobedient to God's word. And if you aren't blessing others, you miss the very thing that enables you to receive a blessing. All right? Peter said, if you want to be blessed, then you bless. Getting what you want is directly tied to helping others get what they need. You want something in 2024? Then bless someone else this year. Amen? What does it mean to be a blessing? Well, blessing is about honoring people. It's about praying for people. It's about, it's about inviting God into people's life. Blessing someone means you honor them by inviting them to know God. Listen, but you don't just leave it up to God. You bless others by working so that they can be blessed. Amen? When you bless someone, you sacrifice your wants for their wants. Blessing someone means you honor them by working for their benefit. Not your benefit, but their benefit. Blessing others means you say good things about them. You don't make things up. Remember, Simeon's blessing included hard truths, but you say good things about them. You speak encouragement. You say nice things to people. Blessing someone means you honor people with your words. So let me ask you, who are you praying for? Who are you working for to bless them, not you, them? Who are you honoring with your words? Who are you blessing? I left a blank in your bulletin there so you could think about that and pray about that. Who do you want to bless? Who do you want to invite into God's life this year? How amazing would it be if our church decided that our main responsibility this year was to be a blessing? Wow, wouldn't that be awesome? I'm telling you, we'd, we'd reach a lot of people. Every day, every week, we would go out of the way to bless others. Can you imagine the impact that would have? You know, if you remember, the first sentence at the beginning of the message was, Did you get what you, what I say? Wanted. We've learned today that a better question for 2024 is, Did you give what you wanted? Did you give what you wanted? I challenge you to make sure that in 2024, your priority is not to live a blessed life, but to be a what? Blessing. If you're waiting for a promise, if you didn't get what you wanted this year, remember, do the right thing. Remember God is in control. Live a holy life. Stay faithful and be a blessing. Would you stand? I want a prayer, prayer blessing over you today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Now may the God of peace, who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood, may he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you, through the power of Jesus Christ, every good thing that is pleasing to him. All glory to him forever and ever. God, we do pray for your blessings. We need them. We live in a challenging world. We, 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 we need the blessings of God. We need the peace of God. We need the strength of God. But Lord, so many times we, we got it backwards. We're so focused on us receiving the blessing that we're missing what brings the blessing. And what brings the blessing is blessing others. It's caring for others. It's making a difference in their life. And so God, I pray you would help us to stay faithful to you. I pray you'd help us to choose to do the right thing. I pray you'd help us to live a pure and holy life. God, I pray you would help us, Lord, 
to hold on to you with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our mind. And God, I pray for your special blessing on each person in this room and those that are watching online. And God, we give you all the praise and honor for it in Jesus' wonderful name. Everyone said, Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. 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 Would you be